Good timing. Hey. <laughs> Hello. How are you all? Well, OK, very good. Nice to see folks. Um, welcome, welcome to the Poetry Center. Uh, we're so happy to see folks coming back to this space. It's been a long time. Uh, so we can start by giving yourselves a round of applause. Uh, thank you. Uh, and we're so thrilled to have um, poets visiting again in Tucson and to do that in a way that is exciting and safe and celebrating their work and their books and their presence. Uh, and that's a hallmark of what happens here at the Poetry Center. And it's a real thrill to have Mahogany Brown here uh, visiting in Tucson again, uh, but for the first time in a long time. And so welcome back, Mahogany. We're really pleased. Um, my name is Tyler. I work here as the director at the Poetry Center. I see some familiar faces and also some new ones. So uh, um, please come introduce yourself. We're excited to be friends with you. Uh, I wanted to point out a couple of things that have changed here in the Ruble Room where we do our readings. So we're really excited to have our indoor-outdoor effort and a lot of air flowing around. It means a lot that you're wearing your masks. So thank you for doing that. And that helps us bring poets in a safe way, which we're really uh, excited about. Um, but we also have a new teaching station and all new technology, new speakers that we worked on during the time that we had off. So if you can hear me well in the breezeway and you couldn't in the past, thanks for those speakers. New lights, uh, um, uh, a whole new technology system. So Nate is live streaming us right now. So if you're, if you're listening online, uh, we're really pleased that you're joining us as well as some new um, uh, uh, technology that supports people uh, that use hearing devices. And so if you use a device and are inside the carpeted area, uh, there's a loop system now. So that will go directly into those devices. And there's also an app called the Listen Everywhere app that will use a Bluetooth directly from the soundboard and connect also directly to hearing devices. So we're really excited about all of that. Um, Mahogany is a kindred spirit. And so we've worked with Mahogany in different ways at the Poetry Center through her work as a poet and as an administrator. Um, if you've been a part of our Art for Justice work that's happened over the past three years or attended any of those readings, Mahogany is very much a kindred spirit in this work and has also been supported by the Art for Justice Fund for her, um, her interest in these topics and her work and activism around these topics. And so in a way, this extends some of that work and poets that have, we've hosted here in Tucson who've been thinking about incarceration and the connection between imaginative language and how we think about the future uh, and the legacy of what incarceration means for the people who have been directly impacted and really for all of us. Um, so we're so pleased that she's here uh, in all of these ways. Um, if you walked in and you saw there was a table out front that had these very delightful brochures that tell you everything that's happening at the Poetry Center, you'll want one of these because you want to know what's happening here. Uh, including the next reading, which I will tell you about. It's going to be on November 4th, and it features visiting poets Lori Ann Guerrero uh, and Carl Markham, and they'll be reading together in the Tom Sanders Memorial reading, and that's at 7 o'clock on November 4th, back here at the Poetry Center in this space. Tonight, um, we're celebrating Mahogany's latest, newest poetry book, and Paola is going to tell you about that uh, very soon. It looks like this. And it is for sale over there. Uh, and so please pick this book up. This is hot off the presses. Um, we'll be hearing from it tonight. Mahogany will be excited to sign those after the reading and talk to you about this work. We're going to skip a formal Q&A and just go straight to the book selling and signing to so come up and speak with us afterwards. Uh, and it's my pleasure, I mentioned Paola, uh, to introduce to you Paola, if you don't know her. Uh, Paola Valenzuela is our newest colleague here at the Poetry Center. Uh, she's the event coordinator here now, uh, and she's amazing. And so if you're enjoying where you're sitting, if you can hear really well, uh, if you like how things have been organized, it's largely because Paula is doing a really great job. Uh, she's been here for a month. So give her a round of applause for what she's up to. She's no stranger to poetry in Tucson, uh, and you can read her poetry book inside the poetry library across the way. Uh, it's called Cricket's Lament. And her last name, again, Valenzuela. So you'll find it underneath the Vs. Um, and uh, we're just so thrilled that she's here. And she's going to come up and welcome uh, Mahogany. And so please, again, help me welcome Paola Valenzuela, our new colleague at the Poetry Center. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much. Um, 
Oh, <laughs> so thank you, Tyler, for that warm welcome. That was really sweet. Thank you. And thank you, everyone, for joining us tonight. I'm really excited to see everyone. Um, like Tyler shared, I'm the new event coordinator here at the Poetry Center. Um, I feel really, really lucky to be able to work for such an amazing institution and really with such an amazing group of people. Um, and there's so many wonderful aspects of this job. But if I'm being honest, the best part of this job is that I get to host and meet all these amazing poets, um, poets who I've been reading for my whole life. Um, and I was especially excited to be able to witness Mahogany Brown's work live and in person, which right now is especially exciting. Um, if you're familiar with Mahogany's work, then you already know <laughs> we're in for a really incredible night. Um, she's the author of recent works, uh, Chloron Sky, Woke, A Young Poet's Call to Justice, Woke Baby, Black Girl Magic, and like Tyler just mentioned, her recent project, I Remember Death by Its Proximity to What I Love, which is a book-length poem, which is an expansive poetic med meditation on who we think is bound by incarceration. She's also the executive director of Just Media, a media literacy initiative designed to support the groundwork of criminal justice leaders and community members. She's also the founder of the Diverse Lit Initiative, Woke Baby Book Fair, and she has received fellowships from Art for Justice, Sarah B. K. Kave Kanem, Poets House, Mellon Research, and Rauschenberg. Mahogany is also the first ever poet in residence at the Lincoln Center in New York City. Yeah. So, if you didn't know Mahogany before tonight, brace yourselves, because you're about to find out. Awesome. Everyone, please join me in welcoming the wonderful Mahogany Brown. <laughs> Thank you so much, Paola. Thank you, Poetry Center. Thank you, Tyler, and your entire team. It is my pleasure to be here. I'm going to start first by turning my phone off, because my mom is a type to, she's watching. And so she's a type to text me and be like, do that one poem. So I'm going to do it, Ma. I got you. But don't text. The, I'm going to read from a bit of this book. Uh, this was aimed, this was designed to be like the book release. And I'm very, very thankful that Tyler said yes. Uh, writing about mass incarceration and the impact on women and children, it feels like, you know, a dissertation until you realize how impacted you are by it. Um, my father has been incarcerated for the majority of my life. Um, all the men in my family have been impacted by prison, if not in prison, working at a prison. Um, and so this is about that. If my mother were ever convicted for her addiction, like my father, I wonder who I would be robbing now. The data from the fragile family studies say my kind of survival displays more behavioral problems and early juvenile delinquencies. I say, you right. I rode into the night with a pistol in my gray hoodie, spitting image of my father, his nickname akin to boom. His red skin, the only thing I remember him towering over me. Black hair, red bloodshot eyes, already running, already gone. This was the closest time I ever came to becoming a woman with a number for a name. It is easier than you think to lose yourself in search of resemblance. Politicians with expensive silk ties cut taxes, pad pockets, Sterilize would-be mothers, charge their district with the bill. Cue reality TV series, suggest art programs to settle the inmates, and wonder why humans climb the walls trying to escape their own skin after the teaching artist is asked to stop bringing in poems that encourage collective behavior. A, father gifts you his hands. Two, 
Your mother laughs with the breath of a ghost. See, no one remembers how much you cried. Five, there are more houses in your throat than one can count. E, you forgot how to count because you forget how to say I love you. Eight, your grandmother is a steeple. Nine, you love how love sounds more than you know how it works. Ten, you love how love works more than you know how to hold the pieces. Eleven, your father showed you how love works with his absent mouth. J, I love you. K, your grandmother is a steeple. You are only a cemetery meandering. 14, you can bury anything inside these hands. 14.5, you are best with dirt. 15, you wear a printed t-shirt to the local farmer's market. The black letters read, do not get lost here. There is nothing but white soot. Marathon runs of Wentworth mist the room like smoke clouds. And I know TV is only TV to someone that ain't never been forced to look outside their own heartbreak before. I binge watch the Australian television drama. After a several week streaming stint, I find myself crying, crying, crying for the world which held my father and uncles and brother and cousins like a fist. What's a cliff dive to a black man hustled by his own country? He earns 92 cents an hour and my tuition still ain't free. The woman behind the financial aid counter asks me what my father makes. I say, furniture for the dorms here. I say, grandfatherless children. I say, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know who he is. No one prays for their babies. I enter the gates of a boy's prison, menacing the border of Bristol, England. The smell that refuses to leave my jean jacket three days later must resemble the air of Pelican Bay. I toss the jacket in the trash, privileged with the ability to push away the dilemma of a nation-induced disorder. Nation-induced disorder was the original name of this poem until I realized it is a worldwide condition fueled by capitalism. This global epidemic is rampant in Thailand, Australia, Mexico, Honduras, Brazil, Papua New Guinea, Ukraine, and Belize. This must be the scent of apathy. And still, this is the closest I'll ever come to visiting my father. I remember death. Yesterday, Nipsey Hussle was mowed down in front of his clothing store on Slauson and Crenshaw. The world raged a forest of dying, like a glaring of fangs brimming into neighboring fur, or a gang of buffalo broadside beneath the Compton skyline, or a parade of elephant eulogies moving in silence, or a cauldron of bats darkening every, every street to match the audrey of a people, our young, a romp of otter uttered blessings facing the bleak faced crash as an ambush of tigers scowl at their audacity the babies wail for justice their screams full of drift and red blues this is how we grieve candles and teddy bears and flowers and posters tear and prayer hands and wailing and wailing, fighting and swinging and singing and singing for the flawed men that search for redemption, for the men that remind us of home. Just minutes away in Inglewood, California, my uncle pulls his blue plastic folding chair under the nearest shaded tree in the communal yard to watch the passers-by. My uncle's youngest brother has been dead for years. He sits outside anyway. I wonder if he can still smell the C's candy factory two blocks away. Does he remember how sweet and satisfying it tastes after we pulled our mangled silver together for lollipops? Does he still wait for my gone uncle to visit? Is that what he's risking under the sun? I remember. So if I can write, I do. If I can write, I do. Today, when the sky is forgiving enough and the smog pretends itself an heirloom of history, I am sky dumb, cloud sick until still. There, in the corner of my smile, is a poem waiting to be picked up, dusted off, and shined real good. 
but all I can muster is the strength to pull myself to the bathroom mirror and try to relocate my father's rage. Instead, I find you, silly poem, waiting to be seen, waiting to be. If I can write, I do. If I can write, I do. If I can write, I do. I do. The quietest time of the day is when I hold my breath, sit back and suck in my stomach, close my eye into thin slits and whistle. The room is only a room, not judge and jury, not a system of impossible fractions. When I share this poem, shape the aftermath of a mudslide into something compact and ready to be carried into the world beyond the steel bars, I pretend my father is in the back of the room. Red, red baby. Of course you want to know what my father must have done to be locked up all my life. How many drugs did he sell? How many bodies did he leave without breath? None. None. Of course, dear reader, you cannot imagine a thief so spectacular, so magical in his sleight of hand that he left the world without a trace. Or manslaughter. Or abuse or addiction, of course, of course, all of the above, possibly a collage of victimless crimes. No, just the audacity to refuse a plea. Mercy, his nickname, go. I wonder as I am writing this in a time in which poets accuse each other of non-committal words like wonder, if I may interject, this placement of the word simply acknowledges that the writer, narrator, is still in search of an answer to the wonderment presented. But lean in, friend, let me tell you what I know. The writer's father has been gone, 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 and so she fears she will never truly understand or know. Yes, this moment of unknowing is her attempt to completely level the obstructive field of vision. It is ultimately an example of how the writer imagines her father whole and how the writer deconstructs the intention behind these daughter sans daddy induced theories. Does he approve of my line breaks? How strategic I can be as I pass his carcass throughout the audience like an offering And because it's a book length poem, I'm just jumping around. But when you have it, you'll get to do whatever you want. Yeah. So I had the uh, opportunity. This, uh, this piece, this book length poem is the first part of a series. The second part is a book of essays that includes uh, interviews. I interviewed family members. I interviewed uh, Miriam Kaba. I interviewed Russell Craig, folks who have been impacted by prison, folks who are prison abolitionists, and um, a cousin who actually just took his life, um, who finally got out of prison went back into the world, um, tried to repay his debt to the community, and still was just um, broken, broken from the effects and the impact that prison promises. And I start the second piece, the second part of this book, with a quote from Miriam Kaba. She said, we don't get how we are all tied to the prison industrial complex. Nobody's out. A prison a private prison can offer their services to the government and charge $150 per day per prisoner. Constant threat in a box. So you know what I'm saying, it's actually a box. We, we miss this as adults, we don't get enough visuals. It's okay. What is a threat except the possibility of danger what is dangerous about a black man beaten for his defiance? What is defiance except the refusal to bow, the bone that restricts the body from quaking? The threat is all of us breathing, constant threat. I have nothing else to write about. The still bars haunt me. I remember death and it knows my name. 
We dance a dance if that is poetic enough. I feel closest to my father with a dagger in my mouth. Or my mouth is the weapon itself when I slam bones. Segregated. Like a whisper. Like a promise. If I were a betting woman, I only bet on my ability to slam bones and walk away from the shaky table every time, victorious, segregated. When I play dominoes, I am the one true king. I am the one left breathing. I am, I am, I am the worst kind of thief. I steal your swag right in front of your own eyes, right in front of your own child. Remember, I'm my father's first daughter. And you will remember my name. It is his, you know. And like any horrible tune, radio frequent with the static as constant as rain in Orange County, there are 35 prisons in California. I miss my father. Since 2017, California's prison's population has hovered at about 115,000 inmates. I miss my father. Currently, there are 2.2 million people in prison or jail nationwide. I miss my father. California's recidivism rate is ranked among the highest in the country. I miss... I am, I am, I am your king, segregated, segregated. House one, I got seven bones. If you don't know how to play dominoes or the language for it, this section isn't for you. I got seven bones. That is actually in the text, just so you know. I'm giving instructions as we go. And every person at the card table looked like my daddy house too. He lose like a body with a heart too soft. He look weak. I bet his demise tastes good. I slither. You ain't been hugged enough. He heard your mother don't love you. His face go slack. My jaws tighten, ready for the blow. The room get ghost, get silent, get mosque like I praise me today. Watch me become the bed your mama climb into every lonely night. House three. My father been gone a long time, but he taught me don't nobody with any sense clap for mediocrity, so I don't. The man child across from me is a Cheshire grin full of beautiful teeth. He smiles and I see my father. He laughs and I see my father. His haunt be my horizon. I'm a rise like the star. I'm a rise like Virgin Mary. I'm a slam these dominoes and sip on that brown. Wait for his heart to foxtrot from his throat. Get with it or get hit with it. The story arrives whether we are ready or not to hold it close. Its little voice singing off key with no fear, a kind of truth. The first son of a young man, an even younger woman, lifts like a fist from the red dirt of Homer, Louisiana, and finds a patch in Berkeley, California, to toil until it becomes a home. Name it the big house. The first son of a father from the military and a mother with a penchant for horse racing grows ivy-like from the soil of a Bay Area revolution. First son will forget and then remember the weight of his hands, will press both thumbs into a human throat, will swing baseball bats in rage. He will connect with a bag of flesh and bones and dreams. My father read like the earth from which his parents fled, relocated to a place where eight more would be born and die. Among the streets of Berkeley, Oakland, Richmond, Antioch, where each boulevard reeks of blood or car oil, drop-top cherry Chevys burn rubber, an inheritance of abnormal hemoglobin and a trench of violence. Here. Yes, here. Violence is considered love, too. And so to close from this series, um, I'm going to read a piece that I wrote for Illinois of Humanity, a project in Chicago, Illinois. And they um, are also Art for Justice. They're an Art for Justice network. And they asked um, a dozen folks about what did it mean to uh, think about social distancing in prison during COVID. And this is called Corrective State. It's a bonus poem. 
It's like at Maxi, Maxi Singles. Anybody remember Maxi Singles? Shout out to you if you remember cassette tapes and Maxi Singles. San Quentin ain't got a skyline to dream about. But my uncle's pride in my ability to recover from an ankle twist on a slab of broken concrete makes it seem so. They say I play pickup games like I've been to the pen. I smirk, a double dribble skipping across my mistaken face. 20 years later, a solar system rids a planet, makes itself a new moon to rock the tides. Still, the barbed wire and shotguns work like clock clicks, and my father still don't know how many times I've challenged death. The COVID-19 that spread across my chest, my breathing so close to an island submerged in fluid. I stuttered awake on the 11th night. I wept until the cold medicine carried me back to sleep. The sickness lies, a boundaryless wretch, and it's the most American thing I've ever felt. Secure in my home and still dying from the heat of capitalism. They are reopening the world after the planet tried to reset itself. In the prisons, the prisons are still packed with people afraid to believe in redemption. Racist adjacent smiles forgive white collar crimes as hedge funds funnel into protective custody, a static of dispatch, the walls clean with other men's teeth. Antibody tests smell like Henrietta Lacks coming back to remind us of what happens when you trust a house of poachers and they call us ungovernable. The way we pick it in protest. This morning is a reminder. Steel bars don't melt with silence. The people behind bars are captives of war. The people behind bars are captives of war. The people stolen into camps and cages stretch beyond the steel and unshakable whisper tremors are collectivity. I want to go home. I want to hold my daughter. I want to see my mother one last time. There ain't no poem in that. The human form was not meant to be locked up Locked down, cage bound. Consider your own bones. The way you lengthen as soon as you turn your face to the sun. A mask over your nose. Relinquishing yourself to this adaptation of love and inhale the new day. Crisp in its welcome. Send a kite to Folsom as we correct our form. So um, I'll close with two pieces, um, both of which are not on the table, but it's okay, because they are in the library, actually. So, sorry. Um, Black Girl Magic, and then I want to close with the meditation, um, because this work has been incredibly hard. So Black Girl Magic is the reclamation. It's something that I wrote back in 2014, um, but it gained traction after PBS put it up. And I then received like my first book deal um, with one of the big five, which was amazing and not at all what I anticipated. But I made the, I made the grave mistake of looking at the comment section. After, you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> I decided every time I'm going to touch a stage, I'm going to do this poem. Um, because they mad when you're happy, it seems. And I just want to make you, you know, in touch with all your feelings. They say you ain't supposed to be here, black girl. You ain't supposed to wear red lipstick. You ain't supposed to wear high heels. You ain't supposed to smile in public. You ain't supposed to smile nowhere, black girl. You ain't supposed to be no more than a girlfriend. You ain't supposed to get married. You ain't supposed to want no dream that big. You ain't supposed to dream at all. You ain't supposed to do nothing but carry babies and carry felons and carry weaves and carry silence and carry families, and carry confusion, and carry a nation, but never an opinion. Cause you ain't supposed to have nothing to say, black girl, not unless it's a joke. Cause you ain't supposed to love yourself, black girl. You ain't supposed to find nothing worth saving in all that brown. You ain't supposed to know that Tina, Beyonce, Cicely, Shonda, rhymes, shine, 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 black girl. You ain't supposed to love your mind. You ain't supposed to love. You ain't supposed to be loved up on you, only supposed to pose. Voodoo child, vixen style. You're supposed to pop out babies and hide the stretch marks. You're supposed to be still. 
So still they think you statue. So still they think you chalk outline. So still they keep thinking you stone. Until you look more Medusa than Viola Davis. Until you sound more Shanene than Kerry Washington. Until you're more side-eyed than Michelle Obama on a Tuesday. But do tell them you are more than a hot comb in a washing set. You are Kunta Kinte's kin. You are a black girl worth remembering. And you were a threat knowing yourself. You were a threat loving yourself. You were a threat loving your kin. You are a threat loving your children. You black girl magic. You black girl fly. You black girl bring it. You black girl wonder. You black girl shine. You black girl bloom. You black girl, black girl. And you turning into a beautiful black woman right before our eyes. Thanks. Right, so we have investigation, the internal investigation. How do we work through this, this whole world that we're in? Then we have the reclamation of joy because they try to take you from yourselves constantly. Um, and now I would like to end with the meditation. So... However you are seated, wherever you are, go ahead and place both feet firmly on the ground, heels and toes. I want you to feel the pulse of your toes. All right, close your eyes, hands open on your uh, knees. Deep breath in through your nose. Exhale through your mouth. One more deep breath in. Think of the way in which you prepare yourself to go outside, especially now, the way we armor ourselves to make sure we stay safe. Exhale and make sure we return home to ourselves, to our families. And I hope this helps. Today you will. Today you choose. Today is yours. Today is only today. Tomorrow ain't here yet, so slow down, slow down. Breathe softly, breathe slowly. Breathe for the homies that ain't here, breathe for the homies that is. Breathe for your own good skin, your skin, your smile, your you, you, you. Come back. Come back, come back to yourself. Look at your cheekbones. Look at the loft of your eyebrows, you so worthy. You so heavy in your weight of yes, you so necessary, you so fly. You wet the water, you cool the brow, you heat the skillet, you the sunset and the sustenance. You keep them chasing the sparks you leave. Today you will. And today you choose. And today is yours. Yes, today is only today. Because tomorrow ain't here yet, so slow down. Slow down. Breathe softly, slowly. Breathe. For the homies that ain't here, breathe for the kin that is. Breathe for your own good skin, your skin, your smile, your you, you, you. Come back, come back, come back to yourself. Miraculous stargaze, most fortunate sky beam, beyond brilliant be your resilience, but you knew that already. Who told you any different? You tell them, today you will, and today you choose, and today is yours. Yesterday is only today, because tomorrow ain't here yet. So slow down, slow down, breathe softly, slowly breathe for the homies that ain't here breathe for the kin that is breathe for your own good skin your skin smile tribe you 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 come back come back come back to yourself 
Anything that don't heighten your stride, leave it today. Anything that don't propel your wingspan forward, leave it today. Whoever told you you wasn't strong, whoever told you you wasn't fly, whoever told you you wasn't brilliant, whoever told you you wasn't beautiful is a lie. Deep breath in through your nose. Exhale doubt. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me and meditating with me. Appreciate it. I love poets so much. Um, please come buy all these books. Uh, they're for sale over here. Uh, come meet Mahogany, uh, and she'll be signing right up here behind me uh, at this station. Come up and introduce yourself to Paula. She's new. She'd love to meet you. Thanks, everybody, for being here. We'll see you again uh, November 4th for Loria and Guerrero and Carl Markham. And thanks for being here tonight. Thank you. Thank you.